This is The Entrepreneurial Mind. I'm Dr. Jeff Cornwall. Today we have uh, as our guest Vic Gatto, who's with Solidus, which is a VC firm here in Nashville. Uh, he's involved in all sorts of other entrepreneurial mischief in town, and we look forward to talking with him uh, after we have these words from our sponsor. Bandwidth for today's show is brought to you by SoftLayer.com. We love SoftLayer here at Talkopolis. They are the greatest hosting company ever. They make everything easy. Check out their website at SoftLayer.com. Thanks again for sponsoring the show. Talkopolis, the social media TV network for your city. So Vic, tell us a little bit about uh, Solidus, and, and uh, you're kind of a uniquely positioned venture capital firm in town in a lot of ways. Uh, what's your business model, and, and, and what are the kind of deals that you guys are funding right now? Yeah, okay, well, so Solidus is, is a kind of a differently structured venture firm than all the other venture firms out there, because Towns, Duncan, and myself, we both like to invest in early, early stage companies sort of two founders at the kitchen table with no company yet is about a third of the deals we do. Uh, the Series A round or the first institutional money where you, you probably have a customer or two, but it's still really early is two-thirds of the time. And I believe, and I joined Solidus because that, Towns believes too, that a 10-year, kind of the normal structure of venture funds just are not optimized to do that early investing. It's such a quick rush for those deals otherwise. They, I mean, a, a normal 10-year fund, they have to exit in three right. to five years. And I, in our stats, our, we've looked at a lot of sort of data about it. The average holding period for Solidus is seven years with a pretty wide standard deviation, a five-year standard deviation. Yeah, it, one of the things that worries me about the traditional model is I think there's a lot of good deals that just flame out because they put in too much fuel too fast. And, the, and they really don't have the chance to kind of mature that, that uh, uh, maybe given a little more time and a little more patience they might have been able to do. It, to me, it's all about misaligned incentives and Solidus trying to align the incentives where we get behind a really passionate team trying to build something they think is important that will lead to a sort of change in industry and also an obscenely big pile of money. You sort of need both. Right. And you can't rush that always, right? So if a VC, and I used to be at a traditional VC, um, we had a calendar-driven return profile. I had to be out by X year. Right. And so I, I, you know, I'm on the board and trying to support the team building this, and yet I got to build it, let it grow, and exit within five years. And you can't always do that. That sometimes happens, but it's not. It's right. hard to force that. Right, and just so people understand, uh, the difference is those are closed funds that have a defined period, and you guys are what we call an evergreen fund that uh, has the ability to kind of have deals come and go out of a single fund, correct? That's right. So the, the, the goal is to build important companies, make a lot of money, and my investors uh, are willing to wait longer as long as the return is there. Right. The, the, we're not bound to a particular sort of year that has to be finished. We're going to exit whenever it's appropriate to exit. So you walk into a kitchen, and you see two entrepreneurs sitting at the table. Yeah. How do you know which kitchen to walk into and which kitchen that you're going to pick for the next deal? I mean, I think it's that's the sort of the art form of it. I think it's more of an art than a science. I'm looking for sort of an opportunity to make ten times my capital. Right. So if we put a million dollars in, I need to see how on average seven years from now, but two to 12 years from now, I can get 10 million out, and I want a one in four chance of success. So that's, that's actually a pretty high success for a venture capital firm. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's high, but I think it, it, it's needed in order to sort sure. of have the portfolio work. You, I can't have sort of a, a small return. You know, some people would say a 20% internal rate of return is exciting. Uh, we're more in the 80, 90 percent, um, which is great, but that has to make up for a bunch of losses, too, where it's just a smoking hole in the ground. Right, right. So the, the, we walk into the kitchen, and it's really about those two or three founders, their experience, their talent, their passion, their ability to recruit a team to follow them and sort of recruit their first clients because 
no employees and no clients rationally would go with this company, right? It's very risky. Mm -hmm. And then also the market opportunity. Is it, is it a market space, a market opportunity, or is it a competitive dynamic such that you could really get meaningful market share and get a 10x return? What's interesting is you went pretty far down the list before you got to the idea. Uh, you were talking about the team and their talents and their experience, and, and then you looked at the idea. So it really is... Uh, it really is the the, whore, uh, the the jockey rather than the horse in a lot of these races. Yeah, I mean, I think a, you know, a, a penny for your thoughts or a penny for your idea is the right analogy, right? The, right. The, the idea, there's a lot of ideas out there. Where it's a $5 million and, dollars for your experience. Yes. Right. Yeah, so you know, I'll give you a penny for your idea and $5 million for your experience and your ability to take that idea and actually turn it into a, a you know, actionable product that people buy and rally, it to build a team and a culture to manifest that idea into a company. So um, you guys have been doing a, a lot more than just this fund. I mean, you've been uh, uh, very instrumental. In fact, I would say you know you, you absolutely are the general leading the charge in terms of uh, Jumpstart Foundry, which is, uh, to me, I think one of the great success stories of accelerators in the Southeast. I'm so proud to have been a part of that. Uh, yeah, I mean, you were there with the with the other 18 of us <laughs> sitting at my conference table trying to figure out how the heck are we going to try to pull this off. That's so. right. And then and we uh, the first year we were in the classroom at Belmont and yes. and trying to find people that we could get in the door to at least pitch to us. So Yeah, we, so the first couple of years, you know, we, we didn't do the cohort model because right. I was very worried that if you run a cohort and it's going to be 10 people and you have six applicants, that's challenging for the brand. Right. So we did one at a time. In the first few months, I was very worried that would be in your classroom with 20 other people and no one would come in. And so I went and found applicants the first couple of months. And then uh, some months we were worried about the applicants that came in too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was, I think that was a, you know, it's a great testimony in terms of a lesson for any entrepreneur that you, know, you took the time to really kind of get the concept right to really develop the proof of concept before you rolled it out in a, in a, in a more significant way to the marketplace, which I think was, uh, I think that's what led to the success. We had the time to kind of experiment and see what worked for Nashville. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's, it's twofold, right? I mean, you need to jump in the pool and start swimming. You can't understand what works, what doesn't work without doing anything. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of uh, angel investors and a lot of people that want to do an accelerator like Jumpstart do too much planning, kind right. of analysis paralysis kind of methodology. But then, you know, what we would call the the lean methodology or, or the kind of the all the buzzwords there out now, we were doing too. Let's not let's not run at full speed. Right. Let's jump in the pool and start swimming, but let's do one a month. Let's figure out how we do this before we go and run a, a 10, 10 member cohort. And this year we had how many applicants? We just closed last night. I think it was 127. 127. Yeah, and so and, we're and from, quickly switching From how far through. geographically? Oh, the, uh, the significant number of international. So, I mean, probably the furthest is either Argentina or Russia. I don't know which is further away. But, uh, but they're, they're, if you need a mentor to go vet that deal, yeah, just yeah, let I'll me send know. You, send you yeah, to Argentina. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're from all over. Uh, the goal is to have 50% from outside Middle Tennessee, sort of coming to the city. Last year we had California, Ohio, New York, Florida, Colorado, all coming to Nashville and moving here for the summer. And then 50% from the local community, the best and brightest entrepreneurs right. from here. And I really like that sort of cross-pollination of ideas and bringing knowledge and ways entrepreneurs think about things from California and New York and Boulder and bringing them here and mixing that with our local talent. And, and the funding success rate has been pretty good so far? You've been happy with it? Yeah. I mean, I think, listen, there's, there's too many accelerators in my mind right now. There's, right. there's well over 200, 250 or so. And I believe that that's going to get cut back dramatically. And the, the, really the two metrics that I think one has to be held accountable to is, are you helping companies be successful? Mm -hmm. And you know, can you make a difference between sort of doing it in your classroom at Belmont or in doing it in Starbucks or doing it in an accelerator model? And we're at about a 60% kind of success rate. Where 
if you complete the program and you survive, it's a pretty you know, challenging program to survive. It's meant to be hard. It's very difficult to get 18 months of progress achieved in three. So you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. If you complete it, then 60, slightly over 60% of the time, you can launch your business. That's a pretty high percentage when you it's look at a, the overall rate. It's a great percentage. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, we have lots of uh, accelerators that are competitors. Techstars and Y Combinator lead the world. Right. They cheat on this metric because they have funding sources that fund every one of their cohort no matter before what. they start. Right. And so, you know, that, that I would do that too. If anyone out there wants to give me money for every company, we'll be happy to cheat too. But mm -hmm. everyone else has to sort of build their companies and then get funding. Right. And I think 60% is very strong for that. But at the same time, I love all my kids. I want them all. We're not going to be happy until we sort of get them all out right. and going. Right. So um, let's kind of shift gears since you were talking a bit about wanting to bring entrepreneurs and money into Nashville. Uh, um, you know, when I came here 10 years ago, uh, I saw a lot of entrepreneurial potential, but I saw a town quite frankly, it was kind of stuck. And, and uh, uh, it was really good at a couple of things, uh, but there was some entropy happening in, in some of those marketplaces. Mm -hmm. and, and, and one of the things that excited me about hearing you talk and, and some of the other folks I met as I, as I got integrated into town was that there was a growing group of people that said, you know, we've got we've to diversify this entrepreneurial community. Um, how are we doing on that? What, what, do you, what, what are some... Uh, what are some wins that we've had that, that show that that's starting to, to, uh, to happen? Yeah, I think it's really sort of a tale of two Nashvilles, right? I mean, there, there's the old, old guard, a lot of the value in town has been built up through the healthcare business and the music business. Sure. And those are both very challenged industries today. Mm -hmm. They're going to be powerful sort of job creation engines forever. Right. But I'm not sure that the shareholder value or the real innovation um, for the city is going to come out of those markets anymore. Right. And so you're seeing a, a bunch of people like me uh, move to town. I moved to town for Vanderbilt. You know, I wanted to be a venture capitalist. I had been an entrepreneur, sold my business, didn't have any finance or accounting skill other than running a little company. And so you need the right letters on your resume to be a VC. Right. Not that I use it at all, but you have to have MBA on there somewhere. And so I knew nothing about Nashville other than that's where Vandy told me to come. Right? So we, my wife went to Peabody, I went to Owen, we both went to graduate school there and showed up at, at uh, Hillsborough Village. Right. And within two years really fell in love with the city and got excited about it, worked hard to stay. Um, and so we, we're sort of imports. And she's from Texas, I'm from Boston, and we really like Nashville and we're going to build our life here. I wasn't sort of a healthcare services career guy. Right. And so I think that's a great platform and people have made a lot of money there. It wasn't what I knew a lot about and wasn't what I honestly was, I was that excited about. Really making an impact on people's lives I think can be done more through technology and data and sort of newer tools. Right. And I've worked hard at sort of integrating kind of the old Nashville stuff. Uh, so we're doing a lot at Solidus and at Jumpstart around healthcare IT and using sort of new models in, in the music business, really more thinking about music as one form of content, but there's lots of content. Right. Um, and that then opens up lots of opportunities to leverage the, the talent and skills and, and you know, community in Nashville and do new, more innovative things. And, and I think the truth is people come to town and they don't want to leave. I, mean, right. I, I work about a mile and a half from my house and my boy, I have two boys, their school was sort of in between. And it's a great sort of combination of incredible opportunity to have sort of business, exciting things going on, but also I can see my boys' baseball game and I can drive them to school in the morning. You can't do that in Boston where I grew up or the Valley. Right. You know? One of the things that, that I was kind of taken aback recently, one of my uh, good friends who, uh, who's in a technology-related business that's had a lot of success, uh, and I was I was like to kind of do the barometer, how's business, how are things mm -hmm. going with and with people in technology. It's are you having any better luck recruiting? Yeah. And he said for the first time I've ever said he said we for the first time are finding all the talent we want. 
And, yeah. and I think that uh, the, the efforts that you and, and a lot of other people have made to kind of help move this city ahead uh, are having an impact. The technology school the, mm -hmm. uh, that John Wark is helping yeah. you with and, and all those efforts are, are, are starting to pay off. I'm seeing it in our own program in terms of a lot of technology kind of entrepreneurs saying, you know what, I'm going to stay here. Yeah. This is a place I can actually stay. I don't have to go to California to make this thing work. And, uh, so last summer, May, it was during Jumpstart, so late May, for the first time in my life, and I, I came here in 99, so I've been here 14 years. First time I heard someone say, I just moved to Nashville because I wanted to be here. Wow. And then I don't count the music business, right. so that's a different animal. Right. And I'm not talking about the guitar guy that sort of shows up right. on the bus. But this was a woman who just, she wanted to be sort of a healthcare tech entrepreneur, and she got in her car and drove to Nashville and just started talking to people. And so that was the first time last summer. It's probably once a month now I get that. With people just, they're just here. Right. And they don't really know what to do except they're coming and they want to pitch in. And it used to be you went to the valley then. Right. And right. that's not, now I think we have to have some big successes. We've had some little successes. Um, but I think Moon Toast is going to be a big success. Right. I think Change Healthcare is going to be a big success. I think we have several companies that have sort of produced a lot of big client wins and have the revenue now. They haven't had the exit yet because it's really not time to. I mean, I'm on the board of Change Healthcare. It's not time to exit yet. Uh, but there's a lot of value being created. Oh, I think it's going to be a heck Just of a good the exit. The Wall Street Journal happens. hasn't written about it yet because yeah. you know, yeah. not. we haven't monetized the whole thing yet. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today, and, yeah. and most importantly, thank you for all you're doing for the entrepreneurial community here in Nashville. Yeah, I, I, it's a lot of fun, and I think there's a lot more people besides me. I'm happy to, happy to be part of it. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah.